Locked to Low Fire on reviews here today. Hi guys, so I'm continuing on with uh, my firearm list, going through the firearms I have and why I have them the way they are. So last video, you saw me with the one gun I could never sell, which was my BRN 180S, right? One gun I can never sell, okay? So I have this on the table because what I usually do with this upper and my other upper, my short bus upper, is that I'll just swap the lowers so the lower for this firearm is the exact same thing as this one. Um, so that's why it's on the table so you guys can go ahead and see. You know, if you saw the last video, the lower is still the same. So you know, SB83 Tactical Brace, Mill Spec Buffer 2, got a Magpul K2, uh, Magpul MOE K2 Plus Pistol Grip, I believe. Yeah. This is one of my favorite ones. Yeah, MOE K2 Plus. So I love the rubber grip on here. I like how it's smaller, not so big, um, more compact. And they still you put stuff in the bottom if you want to. But I really love the rubberized texture on this pistol grip. Um, trigger, velocity precision trigger. It was sent to the channel, single stage trigger. Works very well uh, for these close in guns when you want to get uh, the quick shots off. So single stage trigger. Um, and you know, standard uh, AR-15 mag. Uh, the lower is a Ruger lower. All my lowers are Anderson lowers. This is the first lower that I have had that's not Anderson, and it works just fine. So, there's that. So, go ahead. This is my house gun. So, make sure it's all clear. And here we are. So, this is my short bus uh, rifle, right? I uh, also call it my 400 domestic. Um, no, so let's get into it. So like I said, the lower is still the same. So I already went over that. Right, so coming from the tip, it always starts with the tip. All right, so we have a Yankee Hill Machines uh, muzzle brake. Now, I'm not a big fan of muzzle brakes. Um, I still might swap this out, even though muzzle brakes supposedly are safer, better for suppressors, because it doesn't damage the inside of them as much as, um, as a flash hider will be. But I'm still gonna get a flash hider, because, I don't know, shooting this unsuppressed is just a pain in the ass, it's so loud. Then you got that concussion that goes off and that brings your head, especially if you're shooting near objects or like in a barrel or something, or, around a wall like, because the wave just hits that and it comes right back at you <laughs> so uh, muzzle brakes are not I used to be big fans of muzzle brakes now I'm not I'm a flash harder flash harder type of guy but this is here so I can mount my YHM suppressor turbo 2 uh, suppressor so that shoots very nice uh, it's flat shooting quieter very a lot quieter um, so yeah, shooting suppressed is definitely uh, tits. All right, shoot ready? Yep. Fight. So for the light, my light source, because bad things happen at the light at night, so you need to be able to see them. So let's see. Camera focus. Right. So we got the TLR RM2. So this is their <clears throat> Streamlights rail mounted light. So it's this one is a thousand lumens. The other one's a 500 lumens, I believe. So of course I went with a thousand lumens. It's a one push button on top. So you push and it'll hold, or you push and hold, and it gives you momentary. So click. It's got uh, constant hold. It's momentary. So, um, the light's fine. Uh, I've made shots out to what 150 was, 150 yards plus uh, at night. You know, it's kind of difficult uh, to depending 
if you shoot at night, there's a lot of gas that come out of your muzzle, like depending on the weather and all that. A lot of gas can come out of your muzzle, and so it obscures your vision at that distance. But you know, if it's not too much going on, you can see your target. Um, you can hit it. <clears throat> so the light's fine. I do want to upgrade to a <clears throat> uh, something more on the side, uh, like the Streamlight um, HLX. I was a big fan of HLX, but I'm not a big fan of their pressure pads. Their pressure pads always go out. I've had like two of them, and both times the pressure pads was went out. So, keeping it with just the push button, I think is a better option. Um, but as far right now, this Streamlight RM2 is doing a decent job. Um, I just want something a little bit more rugged, you know, built for being outside. This is good to be on uh, my burn for a truck gun. This would be a great light for a truck gun. Now, as far as short bus, um, it does fine. It's been doing fine. I just want something a little bit more, you know, durable. Okay. So, my rail is a BCM MCMR, I believe, um, 10 and a half inch rail. Um, M-Lock and I got these Magpul rail panels I got from Academy really recommend these especially on these short guns guys because when you shoot these short guns they get hot very fast all right so definitely you want to have some type of rail panel on your uh, on your shorty guns uh, keep your hands um, uh, from getting burnt and these Magpul rail panels uh, do a great job of keeping the heat off your hands um, barrel the barrel inside this barrel is the barrel inside this barrel. <laughs> the barrel inside this gun is a 11 and a half inch Roscoe. Yes, it's 11 and a half inch Roscoe manufacturing barrel. Um, not the purebred or anything like that. Just like their entry level, you no know, run of the mill 11.5 barrel. Um, accuracy wise, on point. Uh, Roscoe and Ballistic Advantage are my two go-to barrel manufacturers. If I'm not using Ballistic Advantage, which is my number one go-to, Roscoe is a solid second contender. You know, you ask like Keith or Eric why not, Roscoe might be the number one. So either Roscoe or Ballistic Advantage, you get either one of those barrels. They're budget friendly, they're one MOA guaranteed, and they'll get the job done. So 11 and a half inch Roscoe barrel. I do want to replace this barrel with a 12.5. Um, I just like the little extra capability of a 12.5 versus 11.5, um, <clears throat> especially when you're shooting out the distance. Ooh, <laughs> That's why you wear eye pro. So, at the bottom, you know, I could put a foregrip on here, but. You no, know, when you go to that, when you go do that, it's no longer considered a pistol. It's called it's considered an AOW, any other weapon, All right? So, depending on who you interact with, whether it be law enforcement or somebody else, they may not know that so much, right? Uh, so it could just be a hassle. Or it could be something that they just, you know, they just do right then. They're confiscated, and later on, you'll have to fight for your. Kid. I don't want to, have to do any of that shit. So I just put this angled foregrip on here and kept the classification as a pistol. So I don't have to deal with any of those. Oh, let's get a tape measure and see if it's 26 inches overall. None of, I don't have to do none of that. This fits, as you see, fits perfectly in my hand. I, I can put accurate shots on target, moving, prone, all that. You've seen the videos of me with this rifle. So I can do what I need to. Um, so. Moving on, front sight. I like a fixed front sight. Um, granted, even though I have this riser, I don't see the front sight. So having this here is kind of redundant, right? Uh, but I like having a fixed front sight up on my rifle. Um, this keeps things clear in my optic. Even though on this riser, I don't see it at all. But when I used to run a lower one third, uh, I like to have the front sight fixed because it gives me a good reference point uh, when I'm you know, making sure my my rifle is just straight. It's just it's one of those things that kind of helped me 
you know, acquire my target a little faster and uh, just put rounds on target. So I've always been a big fan of fixed front sights. Um, but like I said, this thing's on a higher riser than what the traditional mount it came with. So I don't even see the front sight, but it is on a quick detach. So if anything did happen to this optic, I could easily pop it off, uh, kick up my rear sight and I'm back into the fight. So that's why I still have my front sight up, even though I can't see it. I can easily take this off with this little quick, quick detach, flip up my rear sight, and I can still get back into the fight. All right, so the optic. The optic itself, um, I bought off Keith. Um, it's an Aimpoint Pro. Uh, well used, but still works very well. Um, Aimpoint Pros are, if you ask me, probably my go-to optic. If you're looking for one optic that's battle ready, war ready, that's, that's right. <laughs> if you want that one optic that's just really gonna get you through any situation you're gonna find yourself in, Aimpoint Pro is my uh, go-to. I know they came out with the Aimpoint, um, I think the Duty, um, but that's just new on the market, so I don't know the reputation for that, that optic yet. But this optic has been around for a while, seen plenty of combat, um, used overseas, used by law enforcement, used by security. These things have caught fire, still work, been dropped out of helicopters, been ran over, blown up, all kinds, pretty much everything you can think of. Aimpoint has been through it and still pushed through. So if you're looking for that one optic that is just, you know, one one end all be all I guess you could say the one optic you could just run out and do uh aimpoint pro is my go-to optic now you get any really aimpoint and any aimpoint out there is really gonna work hella well for you but at the price point of like four hundred fifty dollars brand spanking new for one of these versus like the six seven eight nine hundred dollars for like a t2 or some shit like that you know, save your money, get you one of these. It's still a red dot, parallax free. Really does everything that the T2 does. It just, this is a little bit bigger. That's about it. Um, the weight, I literally see no issue with the weight. Like, not at all. It's center over the top of the rifle. And it comes into my eye. So, honestly have no, no, no issue with the Aimpoint Pro. One of my go-to optics, I'll buy another one. I'd honestly buy two of these before I buy a T2, just my opinion. No, keep firing, so keep firing till you feel it. Ah, shit, not dropping that one. Alright, so the riser I was talking about, the endpoint by itself on this riser it puts it at a lower one third. So nowadays everyone wants the taller risers than a lower one third. So I got this uh, YHM mount off Amazon. Uh, I have all the links down in the description box on my Patreon page if you're looking for this stuff. Um, so this riser puts my mount at, was it 2.2? 2.02, 2 .2, I think. Um, it's right about right of that area. It's like 2.02, 2.03, something like that. So it gives me uh, a higher optic mount, and I actually like it. Um, I actually like it a lot more because you know I got a not a big neck, but a little bit of a neck. So a 193 was still kind of had to dip a little bit, but this the optics that are like two two inches and a little bit higher, I I really like those. Those just kind of fall right into my line of sight. Yeah, so definitely like this optic height mount. Um, makes things more natural and I don't have to dip my head down so much. All right, so bolt carrier. I know you see the gold grills. Um, so this bolt carrier is a gold titanium bolt carrier from E2 Armory. They sent this bolt carrier out to me. Uh, I reviewed it almost a year ago and it's still in my rifle. 
that tells you how well well it's been working. And then I like the aesthetic of it. I got an all black rifle with the gold gold grill, right? <coughs> so but very very Florida esque, right? All black with gold grills. So um, <coughs> it's a full size full auto bolt carrier. Um, the bolt carrier is full auto. You can go for it. The gun itself isn't full auto, so um, that's what a bolt carrier does. It's reliable, have no issues with it, <clears throat> and then it just gives a nice aesthetic appeal to the firearm. All right, my rear sight, just a simple mag pool flip up in bus sight, nothing special. Charging handle, Strike Industries latchless charging handle. So most charging handles, you'll see like a little latch here. Again, you see with this, even though this has a latch on it. The charging handle itself does not have a latch. Um, this extended charging handle grip does have a latch, um, but it doesn't really do too much. So even if that latch did break, I could still use this charging handle because it's still locking up uh, with these little, uh, let's see, zoom in on this little. receiver so it's not falling out and shit and i really i've been rocking with this lashless charging handle going on three years now because you know back in the day everyone had like the extended last charging extended charging handles right and again this on me because i cheaped out by the cheap charging handle and the latch broke and i couldn't really use the rifle how i wanted to and so i i was gonna get like a like a geisley like one of those but then I saw the Strike Industries lastless charging handle. I was like, oh wow. You know, this just goes around the whole thing that broke. So without, I don't have to worry about a broken latch because there's no latch to break. And like I said, this charging handle itself has been in my gun for at least three years now. And I have, it's never had an issue. I have never even looked at it to replace it. Like it does its job. So shout out to Strike Industries. You got it. Strike Industries makes good stuff. I like their innovation. All right. So besides that, uh, sling is a Blue Force gear sling. Standard, nothing special. It was like forty bucks at the local gun store, and it does what I needed to. So. Go ahead and check and make sure that it's seated. Shit, ready? Headshot. Supposed to do five on the second run. Oh, really? Yeah, it's okay. Headshot. So, guys, this is. Gotta get. Gotta get that thumbnail, you know what I mean? Alright, so, guys, this is my short bus rifle. So. One of my favorite rifles. Um, I've had this at formations before. Uh, not in this setup, a uh, different setup. Like this, to be honest, this firearm has seen so many changes over the three, four years I've had it that how it looks now looks completely different than when I first got it. All right, the first time I had this pistol, it's a 10.5 inch quad rail. And now, you know, you see where it's at now. So, especially if you follow the channel for any, any amount of time. So, this is my rifle. This is the stuff I have on it for a reason. So, what I want you guys to do is go down to the comment section and put down what is your favorite AR pistol or what is your favorite AR build you have. All right, so this is one of my favorite builds. All right, built this thing, you know, from a strip lower to where it is now. And, you know, I like it, it's not perfect. Um, I mean, it's perfect what I do, but 
but I'm not gonna lie. Like, I've just been feeling my burn, my BRN 180S a little bit more than just this. Um, granted, this thing still still tits, works fine. I just wanna swap it out, you know, cause I already got a 10.5, now this is 11.5. Like, do I really need two short AR pistols? No. So I can easily swap the barrel on this one and I can give myself like a 12.5 or 13.9 type deal if I wanted to. So that's what I'm looking at doing with this short bus rifle. Um, and so we'll see where it goes. So on top of that guys, uh, hopefully you liked the, the video. Um, hopefully you liked my setup, my build. So and I want you guys, um, if you're looking for the parts of this firearm, where you can get some of this stuff, where can I get that brace? Where can I get that bolt carrier? Where can I get that trigger optic? like yada yada all that stuff go down to the patreon link in the description box it's gonna be like the first thing you see on there and it'll take you to the patreon site it's a dollar a month and you'll have to be able to get the links to everything i use here maybe even at a discounted price um if you're looking for firearms training or to get your ccw certificate i'm here in jacksonville florida um, i do travel but you need at least six people or more for me to leave the state all right so on top of that guys, um, like, comment, subscribe, stay educated, stay dangerous, lots of load out.